Continuing with our gym tours around the country, one of my favorites and kind of what I hope to build at some point in my own next iteration of my spaceship, I'd like it to be a bit like this. I'd like to have this metal building, my gym, and then some toys. So I'll let John show us around and tell us why he picked the stuff that he's got in here. So welcome to Power Athlete HQ. So the reason we picked what we did, really I don't think you could have a professional facility, especially as an NFL and a major sports team, college team, without Sornex. No. Uh, I am 100% in love with their gear, so we got base camps. Uh, I just ordered some new pieces for these, which hopefully they'll get to me someday. To oh, the, move these up yeah, the adjust bar. I've got them on mine. Yeah, when we ordered these, they weren't out yet. Right. And so I finally was like, hey, fucking send those to me. Yeah. So we got those. So we got two base camps full set up. Uh, obviously a ton of plates. Uh, I have a mono because we used to do a bunch of West Side stuff and squat real heavy. I so still prefer squatting in one. I still like squatting in a mono. One of the original Kabuki bars. I got one of the Elite FTS safety squat bars. Got the original Dr. Fred Hatfield safety squat bar. Yeah. Uh, I got a Mastodon over there in case you want to squat a thousand pounds. Uh, some <sighs> Duffalo bars. Um, I'm good on that, by the way. Yeah, I've done my thousand pound squat in the past. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, so I squatted 800 off of that, and that was more than enough for me. Do you ever use gear or anything? You ever do canvas suits or anything? Uh, I wore wraps, or sorry, okay. I wore Predator briefs one time, and that's what I squatted 800 in. <sighs> and I stood up so fast, I almost threw the weight off my back. Yeah, I, I did a grand in multiply briefs, full canvas, and knee wraps. Oh, Jesus. It's awful. Dude, it's uh, such a terrible when feeling. When I hit the bottom, the pressure in my head almost fucking <laughs> yeah. exploded. Yeah, I imagine yeah. like, like a thermometer in the, in the cartoons where it's like, <laughs> Oh, for sure. Like I would absolutely like all the capillaries in my face and neck would pop yeah. every time we train. So we just picked this up. Uh, Prime Fitness makes this trap bar, yeah. which is pretty cool. It's got adjustable handles, mm. so you can kind of adjust the range of pull. And I like it because it's a little narrower. I think with some of the other trap bars, they're a little wide. And I like the fact that it kind of moves and you can kind of has a jack on it. Man, trap bars have become kind of a the market everyone's making cool shit for right now. Yeah, I don't know why all of a sudden. I think they're a great tool. I, I like it. I, it, it I mean, for neutral. athletes, who gives a shit you where, where you're pulling lunge. from? Uh, I like them, you know, when we were doing a lot of the triphasic stuff, we were using the, the trap bar for loaded jumps. Right. So it worked really well. Way better than any other option. Yeah. So yeah, we still got the mono, obviously Sornex, pulley system, comp bench, ton of kettlebells and dumbbells. Oof. So um, that's a 203. Gross. Kettlebell Kings here in Austin. So I cruise over there. I call this Big Tex because it weighs more than Tex. Aww. But so Tex is constantly fighting that way and I got Little Tex. Yeah. And then we got our 103, you know, and a ton of other stuff. So just a lot of kettlebells. Uh, center mass bells from Sornex, another big fan. A uh, ton of dumbbells up to 150. Uh, you don't need anything heavier than that. Nah, I do want to get power blocks. So they're pretty fucking cool, man. So like I, the I older I've gotten, I'm like, these are neat. <laughs> so I told Sorenex, I'm like, if you can find me a 175, like a 120 and a 95 cent, so I'd have three, I'll build a rack for it. And uh, I'll basically donate all these, dumb, these dumbbells to something. And then uh, we use a ton of the, the air bikes. Yeah. Um, I, uh, we've broken and beat on these are the original uh, assault bikes and we beat on them pretty good. I really like the rogue bikes because it's got a little bit bigger seat. They're just a, a little bit different. So we use a ton of those Versa climbers, obviously. See, uh, I'm, I'm still, I still prefer the original. Yeah, I prefer this model. Yeah. Well, these are the original ones. Right. So they're by far du more durable, but we've actually fucking broken a bunch of them. Oh, dude, they, so, well, look, it, for me, at least with the bike shop background, like I have no problem, like, oh, pedals and shit like that. This is easy fixing. So I hit them up about sending us new parts. So I, I got to get some new parts for them. So I ordered those, but you know, fucking thanks coronavirus. Thanks. I want to see if I can upgrade my cranks to like nice road bike cranks and like, <laughs> So we've been using this tread sled as right now, it's using it as little kid storage <laughs> for my son's most favorite thing, which my neighbor gave him. Peep this thing out. Hold on. Part of me really wished it was going to do that thing where it flips over like the tiny dog toys. It's way too big. So this was at our neighbor's house and he like asked about it. And so finally I like, I came in, it was, it was by like the, the building and I was like, well, I guess you got your dinosaur. So he like, we were watching, I, I was showing him, I'm like, you're like He-Man. So this thing's pretty bitching, man. It's, uh, it's pretty good. Am I going backwards? Uh, you or it doesn't matter? You, you can do it other way. What am I doing wrong? Why do I feel so stupid on it? Uh, I think what you have to do is you almost have to rip 
rip. There you go. So I oh man. I like this side. Yeah. To come this way, and then we hook up bands. And be able to kind of pull. Oh, nice. So we can hook up bands to these, and then get some. Resistance. You all dangly. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, because now that I'm putting together my facility, I'm starting to like, what are the tools I'd like? I have, I have a true form and I really like it. Yeah, love the true form. Yeah. So we have Versa Climbers, uh, uh, Concept 2 Ski Ergs. So always a fan of, this, of the Concept 2 propane tank there for my forklift. And then uh, don't mind all the mess where, you know, had a busy shop day yesterday. Our true form branded deal. Obviously we got some anvils. Why you have, what, what is, mine doesn't have this. Is this a band attachment? Yep. Yep. So you can hook some bands up to the backside and do some resistor runs. Normally when we use it, what we found is we actually kind of block it up so that, cause when I was running- Feels was, a bit more of an incline. I was hitting this. Ah, just. Yep. Yeah, somebody was talking about setting it up with, and just remove remove the top. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I, I don't think me and, me and that thing aren't gonna work great that way. This was from our old gym and I cut it all up and basically tried to redesign it and Fucking seems to be working all right. Just for a uh, glued ham race. Yeah, well, so it originally attached to this rack. So what I did is I cut up the rack and just basically made feet for it ah. so we could use it. Uh, I need to cut this God up. damn, being able to weld is so uh, nice. <laughs> in the, what, what do they say in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man's king? Yeah. In this fucking gym business, to be able to weld and fabricate is fucking helpful. Oh, it just cuts down time of like, oh, we need a thing, I'll make it. Yeah. One of the original Westside Barbell Reverse Hypers, which we got obviously hundreds on. And, which is uh, being used as a table. Uh, well, it's the standing desk. Which is what most Reverse Hypers I've ever come across. I try to use mine, but we kind of use our Demmer box here. You know, I've, I've never had one consistently, like whether at my house or at a gym I was training at. So I do think I want to get one for dope that I'll, because I think it would be beneficial. I like it. Yeah. So uh, uh, Cal Dietz and I were talking about him the other day and he really likes a single leg. So cross patterning, single leg, this kind of way. Where do you put your other leg? Uh, you just kind of let it float. Does it not go into the thing with yeah. it? Yeah, you just kind of like leave it there, but you're only loading one leg at a time. Okay. So he, he likes some cross patterning. The machine, which I firmly believe was the reason I was able to bench 550 pounds for reps, or sorry, 535 pounds for a double, was uh, the hammer incline. So this machine, when I worked up to five plates on the other side, like my bench was through the roof. So I'm always like looking on Facebook Marketplace and all of a sudden this one popped up and I was like, it's mine! Yeah. Finally! Finally, so I, I was trying to order one through uh, Hammer and like there was nothing. And then finally one popped up from some gym going out of business and it was like brand new. So I, I jumped and got that. Yeah, I'll have uh, jammer arms on two racks. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll do that until, until, until one, until one shows up. So we, we, uh, we went out and worked with the guys at Development Group and they had pit sharks. And I had never really used the pit shark, so we were doing a ton of stuff with them. Just being able to do some like some walks and some strides now, and be able to- Now for that, these are killer. Yeah. The banded like. marching, banded yes. walks and glute development that way is so rad. That's what I liked it for. So we had never used it and those guys have it at their facility, so they wanted it in their program. And it was funny, we were sitting at dinner talking about it, and all of a sudden I opened up Facebook. Uh, to like check my Facebook, and I like clicked on Marketplace, and it was listening, and one was there, and I was uh, like, ooh. So I hit the guy up, drove damn down. Damn you, internet, but also thanks. So I drove down to San Antonio, and I pull up, I talk to the guy, oh, no big deal, and uh, I get out of the car, and he's like, I'm a huge CrossFit football fan. And he's like, I can't believe you're here to buy this thing. And so he's like, well, let me go get some people. And I fucking literally just like, lifted it up, we fucking wrangled it, threw it in the back of the truck, and I'm like, I'm good. So we brought it back, we've been using it. This belt squat from Westside is by far the fucking gold standard. Man, This that's... thing, like, like if, if you can squat 10 plates, five on either side, six plates, which we've worked up to, your fucking squat's six, 600 pounds. Ro Rogue's version of this that's on the pulley, mm -hmm. and it's a little bit smaller footprint of everything, 
it's really good. Yeah. It's very, very well designed. It feels super, super similar. So what we started doing is we uh, we started using this for a bunch of the banded glute stuff, and then we were, we were doing free squats and then mixing up box squats on this one. Mm -hmm. Man, the box squat, just being able to sit back on the box and leverage the pulley, it's a motherfucker. What we, no. found, what, what we found, which was pretty fascinating with our athletes, was the people that couldn't sit in the squat here who were totally quad dominant, like you can't quad dominant squat this thing. No. So if you're a quad dominant squatter, you're used to pushing a ton of forward niche, uh, like a bunch of, of uh, you know, positive shin angle, and then they try to sit back, they get fucking tacoed in the bottom. So it really taught people how to drive back against it, and I really enjoyed it for that. We got weighted vests. We've been, yeah. We, we've been fucking with all these breath belts. I found these big ass plates just because the wagon wheels. I figured I couldn't leave those behind. Interesting belt squat attachment. I started doing them using uh, Sornex's J squat. I think, we, I think we aptly named them Gimp squat, Gimp squats. Mm -hmm. And so there's a chest harness for pulling a sled. Mm -hmm. So you use that to hook your pulley to. Mm. So you have to keep that torso <laughs> yeah. upright. Doesn't take a lot of weight for it to get real <laughs> fucking gnarly, yeah. but they're, they're really great for like, make sure everything's locked and you know how to transfer power yep. from the bottom to back up yeah yeah so yeah we got that and uh obviously another rack and now how, do you, how do you like the, the breath belts uh i so what's what's fascinating is for years we've been teaching people how to how to manage their trunk using dead bugs mm -hmm. you know be able to draw the trunk in what was pretty fascinating is the first time i put on a breath belt it was uh actually a tactile cue for how people should hold their trunk and I thought it was really fascinating, especially for women who I think when they have babies and like, you know, going through some of that stuff, they start having pelvic floor issues. Yeah. And, you know, Aunt Lowe talks about that stuff. Kelly talks about it a ton. What I found with the breath belt, the female athletes that we had that are moms, they can put the breath belt on and it's like a tactical, like, oh, that's the position you want. This is what you want. So it almost just immediately makes sense. Yeah. And then they're like, Oh, now I can replicate. So we use them more for what I like. And, and I know this doesn't exist. Like there's like a, uh, an amnesia almost yeah. where I think, um, like my wife had separated abs and was having all these ab issues and she couldn't control her mid her midsection. So we met the dude and I can't remember his name for the life of me. Right super, now. super nice guy. Yeah, yeah, same. Uh, I'm, and, uh, I'm not great with player, yep. And I'm totally forgetting it, which sucks, but he sent us a bunch of breath belts. And as soon as I put them on, I was like, Oh, I see what it does. And then we just started using them with uh, some of our, some of the ladies that come in. So my wife, you know, there's a riding school next door. Mm -hmm. So my daughter rides, my wife rides. And so now my wife trains the owner and then also trains all their competitive girl riders, strength training to make them better in the saddle. Yeah. So what we found for the girls and, and also Weird. their moms, cause they, I was like, Hey, why don't you get their moms to come in too? So they're doing some other daughter stuff. Like the moms that have trouble managing their trunk, they put that on and it fixes it instantly. Man, and what like, a cool, man, it's, it's a really, really fascinating thing for, for ladies that have that kind of amnesia almost. That and you know, for, for dudes that have trouble trying to get so as any issues like that, like, Oh, there, there it is. Yeah. We found it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we've always been so trunk heavy in our training that it wasn't much of an issue. And I think that's why I've been able to avoid a lot of low back and, and, uh, and any low back like hip issues. So I think it's a really fascinating one for, especially for guys that like it weak in their lower ab. I like it for that. And then one of the classic things that we can teach sprinting on. So we teach sprinting with the true form, but mm -hmm. also with the mini tramp. With a mini tramp? Dude, the mini tramp is one of these amazing, simple $50, $60 things that we can teach sprint technique on. Uh, you, are you, are you have my attention. So jump on the little mini tramp and all I want you to do is just kind of give me a little, some strider high knees. There you go. So you can teach people a knee drive, toe up, toe up. I can tell it's your right knee. That yeah, it doesn't move great. Doesn't I don't move know if, you, well. if you're aware. But so we started using these a ton with just uh, being able to sprint and teach uh, technique, high knees, a lot of arm swing, upright torso. And it was uh, really valuable and also in the programs. So like when we start coaching sprinting and, and stuff and in the programs, people can film, uh, you know, cause if you coach sprinting, it's like, oh, there he goes. But with this, yeah, we, it, we've been able to do it in real time. So this mini tramp, I, I got this from Dave Spitz, Cal Strength. Yeah. So we were out there working with a bunch of the NFL guys and he was like having them do sprint prep with uh, on the mini tramp. And he took me through it and I was like, fuck, Dave, that's really smart. It's really Man. Easy. So yeah, because then you get a ton of reps in one place from a guy. Yep. Super, super interesting. I always love catching like that makes sense. Yep. Fuck. Yeah. And then. Oh, yeah. The shop. It's a bit of a disaster. 
Let's but, take a look at the Camaro. All right, so. As it's all shiny. Yeah. Oh, is it? It's, well, well, it'll blow the doors off. Fuck yeah. Um, we'll, we'll migrate over into the shop side. So this is, don't mind all the dust and dirt. We were welding and banging on when the When you wall. built the building. I should have done. How much, how much, <laughs> how much room did you think you had? <laughs> Well, when, when they told me 92 by 50, I thought it'd be plenty. Yeah, I was like, now, oh, 5,000 square what feet, I this would be done great. Built two of these fucking buildings side by side, I could have had a shop one and a, and a gym one. You know, we put in a lift because uh, to be able to do anything really <sighs> cool. Yeah. So this is that 79 K30 crew cab in uh, dark Carmen red and white that we that I've been working on. Mm -hmm. And she's gonna be a bad, 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 bad. Are you gonna daily drive or are you gonna flip? Uh, I don't know. Well, daily drive for a period of time. Yeah. Nothing's permanent. Yeah. So it's it, it's kind of a, these are super rare or hot right now. I just had this truck. Uh, I bought it as a fire truck. And... Uh, Is that what it started as? It, so it was originally started like this, and then it got purchased as a fire truck. Oh. And it converted to a fire truck, and then when I got it, I converted it back. Right on. I just ordered some Devers for it, so we got some springs, 37s, and then it's got an LMM Duramax in it. and. Uh, I was just building cross members yesterday and doing oh, a man. bunch of stuff. And then this is a crew cab rock crawler I'm working on with a Cummins. And uh, she's sitting ass low because I had to move it around a little bit. <laughs> so, and then this is a 69 Camaro I, I, I built about four years, or sorry, 14 years ago. And I sold to an artist buddy of mine, Todd White, who was just on Joe Rogan. And uh, he hit me up and said, hey, I, I want to sell it. Mr. White. Can you... Help me out, and I said, "Yeah, bring it back." I, I and so I ordered new wheels for it. So I'm gonna put Steelys, just the original rallies. Yeah. And then uh, I'll put the original seatbelts back in it, and put on a new steering wheel, and I'll make it look a little more stock. Now, back in like 2004, 2005, this was fucking cool as shit. Of course, of course. It, look, it's look, low let's pro, not pretend it's not cool. No, but low, low pro torque thrust, red piping, the whole nine yards to match the red hockey stripe which was cool because they didn't really make a red hockey stripe, so this is actually hand painted. Oh, is it actually? Yeah, wow. it's not Those guys are so... No, I, I, I had a dude come out and paint this thing. I love hand done pinstriping so stuff. This is, uh, it's got a Crate 502, that Rat ZZ motor that we had to do a little more juice to it. So the, not, not only Todd White, Todd White owns it, but I also, this is the car I was cruising with Fergie and... Uh, oh, that's well. right. Yeah. Oh, the old Fergie car. I was... Poor I was, Josh Dramel, it's too much car for him. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Uh, hey, at least you know who you are. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, f you found one of your limits. That's yeah. great. So, Ooh. Oh. Those are super cool. So yeah, these are the blocks that we weld up for our block one event. These are what I was working on yesterday. Explain the block one thing, because that's um, the folks we got. Here at Power Athlete, uh, that's what it looks like before I finish it. This is like what it looks like when it's done, after we've got a sandblast them. So uh, Power Athlete has an education track which is through the academy and we have an event or sorry we have the methodology course when you pass the methodology course you can come test for your block one and if you pass the block one you get a block and I hand weld these so the people that come out here they come out here for two days to Austin Texas go through all the you know rigamaroo testing the whole nine yards if they pass they get a block they enter our block one network and if they don't they get to come back another time is there a block two yes and there's it looks a block like three. this. Yeah. <laughs> there's no actual physical representation for block two and three. It's just more of a, uh, like, as they get through different processes and get farther in the education, they get different other kind of very, locks very and keys. Cool. So, and very then under, cool. hiding under there, under shame, is a 68 GT500 Shelby. Under shame? Yeah. Because I've. Well, I imagine that'll get. It, it'll get worked on. In a timely manner. Yeah. As when, they say. So, uh, if I can turn it each week into 10 days. That way I could get at least four shop days. I could probably get this shit hammered out. Oh, you mean that whole that whole thing of like, if we had a bunch of 30 hour days this week, <laughs> yeah. I'd manage to get a ton of shit done. Having a forklift and a lift and fucking welders and grinders and all this other stuff, man, has really added to it like, in terms of like taking the shop game up. Yeah. So it's nice to have my own stuff. Yeah, I, I fucking blasters. dig it. So. I, yeah, super, super dig it. This is always something that always fires me up coming out here. Yeah, I gotta clean it up, man. Like we were like worked from like 8 a.m. to like six o'clock last night. And I just was like, finally like uh, DJ who was, who was over yesterday. I was like, just get the fuck out, dude. I'm gonna just go. call it. Yeah, I'll, I'll clean it up in tomorrow. So you be in today. your shop. And he hit me up and you're like, hey, we're doing it. I was like, oh shit, I don't have much class to uh, clean the shop. But, well, that's it. There's Power Athlete HQ. 
It's one of my favorite places to get to come train. I love getting to come to Austin and hang out, man. Your, uh, your universe is a fun one. Thank you, appreciate it. So, thank you guys, and uh, spread hate always party.